Hey Z Stars, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and I'm here with another video, obviously. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much. Welcome back. Hey, how you doing? If you're new to this channel, please be sure to subscribe. We have lots of fun here. And if you've been here before but you're not subscribed, IDK, what she doing? Be sure to join the family. There are lots of cool things that we do. Anywho, today we're doing something really different. I'm not gonna talk to you guys about how sexy my hair is looking. I'm actually going to talk to you about life in Nigeria and dating and relationships because a lot of you are extremely curious about what it is like to live in Nigeria and then on a broader spectrum in Africa. I mean, I can't tell you about the rest of Africa, but I can tell you a bit about Nigeria as an American person living in Nigeria. <laughs> Anywho, I don't wanna spoil the surprise, so I'm gonna let you guys just do those things I always remind you to do. So that's give this video a big thumbs up. Please and thank you. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you want to see from me. Be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones. And last but certainly not least, subscribe to my channel and turn all of your notifications on so you know exactly when I post new videos. And I post videos every Tuesday and Saturday, you guys. I'm actually being really good about my schedule. So be sure you're here every Tuesday and Saturday at 10 p.m. West African time, which roughly translates to about like 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anywho, that's enough of that. Let's get right into the video. It's gonna be really interesting. So everyone, as a young American living in Nigeria, life has been really interesting. Now throughout my dating and my love life, I have to say I've been like really blessed, y'all. Like all the guys that have been chatting me up, if they were F-boys, God has removed them by fire by force. If they were really great guys, they've remained long enough to teach me whatever I need to learn for the next relationship or life, whatever. Your girl hasn't had any serious scrapes or whatever. Every place I go to, guys are trying to chat me up. I'm pretty sure this is like every girl's experience pretty much because guys in this part of the world generally are quite bold. They're very okay with just letting you know, yo, I think you're kind of sexy. You trying to chat? Can I get your number or not? Like guys, I was at MFM, which is Mountain of Fire at church, right? And a guy literally came up to me and my guy was like, um, hi, you're looking pretty. I just want to know if we could get to know each other. I was like, my guy, I'm literally covering my body, covering my hair, and I'm not wearing any makeup. What are you looking at in this kind of church? Long story short, I'm telling you guys this to let you know that guys in this country, they will go after what they want. So I've encountered many, many interesting types, though thankfully I've avoided serious blunders with the many types of guys that I've seen. So anyway, don't wanna to be too long-winded. Let's just get right into this. I know that all of you are pretty curious. And if you can relate, please comment down below. Let me know. So the first type I'd like to mention is a very, very famous type. We all have them in our lives. We have them in our places of work. We see them out and about looking sexy in their agbaras and their other native wear. And that is the Yoruba demon. Now I know some of you that are probably abroad are like, Yo, what in the world? What is that? Isn't that racist or tribalist? Guys, look, <laughs> this is a common Nigerian idiom. So it's nothing that anyone really takes offense to as a member of the culture. I'm kind of allowed. But a Yoruba demon, what can one even really say? There's so many types of them. They tend to be really beautiful. They tend to have all the swag, but one way or another, they'll come to damage your life. Some are nice, some are tall, others are big and others are small. <laughs> Bars. If you find yourself in a relationship with a Yoruba demon, it's only fasting and prayer that can help you to recover from the day that he breaks your heart. Whether it's for that guy to leave suddenly, stay and put you through a lot of crap, or just decide that she's not good enough for me and treat you like that for the duration of the relationship, they're finna ruin your life. Be very wary. Now, a quick disclaimer before I continue. These are just some standard archetypes. I'm just letting you guys know now. Before y'all come for me in the comments, it's not every guy the behaves the way I'm describing. Next is the Igbo angel. Now I've had my own experiences with Igbo angels. They pretend to be really sweet, but in actuality, you'll be talking to one, you know, he'll be telling you, girl, you are so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to make you my woman. Oh, we can have a future together. You're amazing, incredible. Only for you to discover that homeboy had a girlfriend for five years, and then you're seeing his engagement pictures on Bella and I Jeff. That actually happened to me. If you guys wanna hear that story, you can just navigate to right here. It happens to a lot of young women. The guy 
guy that I happened to meet that did this to me, I met him at a wedding and his girlfriend was in the wedding for goodness sake, but he was still blowing me kisses, coming to meet me, dancing with me. Shamelessly, it is not your portion. That's my prayer for you. Igbo angels, they'll usually be really suave. They'll smell beautiful. They'll be really attractive, extremely attractive, but then they're trifling. Next up, especially if you're in Abuja, you have the Alaji. Now, my guy is that really attractive northern guy, you know, always wearing his trad, even in the club. He probably has plenty money, but let's be real, unless you're a fellow northerner, he's probably not trying to marry you because y'all probably don't share the same religion. And even if he does marry you, chances are that he's gonna like maybe have you as number three, four, five. It's just not advisable. If you know that you cannot convert and and you know that you are not already, just be carrying your wahala and go. Next is the sugar daddy. Now these ones can buy you a house, they can buy you a car, they can buy you Gucci, they can even buy you Fendi and it's trendy at <laughs> bar. Guys, they can buy you like anything you want to, but just know that if you're gonna be attached to one of these guys, you're gonna be giving him a little something something in exchange. Now I actually have a little story about a sugar daddy, really more of a glucose guardian that you guys can like check out right here. No biggie. My experience wasn't that deep, thank God. As for me, I wouldn't advise trying to attach yourself to a sugar daddy for a few reasons. They're usually married. They're usually looking for something in return aside from this. <laughs> could be your destiny. And they expect you to be available whenever they need you. So you can literally be out with your girls as soon as your sugar daddy calls. He's finna like let you know like, girl, I don't care what you doing, be with me in how many hours, minutes, whatever. So I mean, I don't know, the girls that live that lifestyle have a lot of heart. I don't judge them at all, but it is a lot of energy to maintain that kind of a relationship, regardless of all the things that you're getting in return. I don't know, I personally, personally, I don't feel it's worth it, but hey, you know, to each, his or her own. The next one is one of my favorites, the glucose guardian. Oh my gosh. So glucose guardians are fantastic, you guys. They'll be driving nice car. You know, they'll have all the money. Just be spraying it anyhow. You know, you know. They'll be having the nice house, be wearing the Rolex, be having the nice clothes. They'll take you to lunch, to dinner. Maybe they'll dash you 50K every once in a while. Those ones are great. Like, <laughs> Those ones do not really demand any of this, you know? I mean, I'm fine with that. Personally, I don't have a glucose guardian. I've never had one. They don't be checking for me, which is fine because I can make my own money. I can take care of myself. I mean, the closest glucose guardian I've had was my boyfriend, that's about it. But that's not a glucose guardian, that's a real relationship. These encounters are fairly harmless. You know, if you're trying to get little things here and there from a guy, girl, I don't advise it, but hey, if that's what you finna do, at least go for those glucose guardians they'll be giving you small small they won't be expecting anything in return hopefully just be praying covering whatever they be giving you because as for me i cannot shout i'm sure your parents cannot shout so next is one of my favorites i know plenty of these and that uh oh yahoo uh oh yahoo uh oh guys look don't judge me it's violin that i used to play i cannot sing so please do not judge me it's just violin that i can do that's yahoo boys y'all many of you in the states are probably like girl what is yahoo yahoo well have you ever gotten an email from somebody saying oh please I'm an African prince, and I urgently, urgently need your assistance. Could you please loan me 350 million bazillion dollars? I will be sure to multiply it for you tenfold, and you'll get your 350 bazillion million dollars back. I mean, I'm sure we've all gotten that kind of spam mail. Yeah, those are Yahoo boys. They typically scam people out of their money very successfully. I don't know how Westerners still be falling for this stuff. It's 2018. And they use the money, and they live large in Las Giddy. You know, driving the sexy Lamborghini, wearing all the freshest clothes, even copping that new Benz. They just be enjoying that life very well, even in Abuja. Like there are plenty of Yahoo boys. And yeah, it's really just about internet fraud, y'all. So those ones are not serious. Usually they'll be blowing their money in the club any and anyhow. And they're not looking for anything super, super authentic. So if you respect yourself, I don't advise you to go that route because that's how one day your boo Namdi or Tosin, he'll be doing his low fraud, whatever, whatever, duping people. Next thing you know, Lagos or Abuja police will come and carry him to jail. Where will you be, my sister, if you're not making the money for yourself? It's not by force. Respect yourself and distance yourself from Yahoo Yahoo. Please, I beg of you. 
There are a few different Yahoo Yahoo types. Now you have the ones that are highly educated, super eloquent. They can dress very well, look really dapper, and they'll say, oh, they're into tech. That's where they're making their money. Just know they're probably hackers, oh. They're probably stealing the money, yo. Oh. I'm just letting you know now. There are also those ones that you'll just go to your bank. You know, you'll be sitting in the exclusive lounge. You'll see some rough looking guys just walk in. All of a sudden, the girls in the bank, they get up and start asking them, what do you want to drink? Can I help you? Meanwhile, well, you've been sitting there for how long and nobody came to attend to you. So if you see any of those two types just be a bit wary let's be real unless you're doing oil in this country or you're an entrepreneur and your business is really just popping like that or a politician money's not going to be flowing like water like that So the next one is Yahoo Plus. Now that one is everything I just told you and then some jazz. Now, for those of you at home that are from the abroad, if you're watching this, it's not like, you know, you're like saxophone, Kenny G, Dizzy Gillespie. It's not that kind of jazz. -o. This is juju, voodoo, witchcraft. So those ones, the Yahoo, Plus, really, you should be doing this when you see them because fam, those ones are mod. Like I've heard the craziest stories since being in this country about guys who will literally like go to native doctor or something. By the way, a native doctor is like a voodoo man or a medicine man. They'll literally go to the native doctor and he'll give them something to put on the chair of their car so that any girl they offer a ride, they'll be like, oh, hey, do you need a ride? As soon as the girl sits in the seat, they've collected all her blessings and her destiny. Now I know that some of you are like, yeah, that sounds absurd, that's like crazy. But I I, I've seen some crazy ish myself, so I don't doubt it. And there are people that do not sleep at night because that's part of the jazz they've done to be doing their Yahoo. So look up if you want to vacation in Nigeria and some sexy guy comes up to you and he's like, Hey, you need a ride? Girl, run for your life. Now you also have the overconfident height challenged one. As a young woman that is pretty tall, 6'2", I run into a lot of these guys, like especially when I go out, which is not very often. I was actually in the club the other evening and I ran into one of these types. He was literally so rude and so offensive and he thought he was like the ish. He was like, Yo, come over here, I wanna to talk to you. I was like, uh, is it me? Because God forbid any guy will try and summon me as if I'm an animal. A gentleman will walk up to a young woman and tell her, Hi, I'd like to make your acquaintance. Hi, I'd like to speak with you. You're really lovely. Or something very polite and very honest. But this guy was just rude and crass and uncouth. Next, you have the IJGB. Now, what is that, you might ask? Well, I'll let you know. Now, I'm an IJGB. I just got back. Now, I'm the type of IJGB that was born and raised in the state. There are other types of IJGBs that maybe have gone to primary school, secondary school, and university abroad. There are also types of IJGBs that have maybe gone to university abroad and then lived in the abroad for like 10 years plus. Now, these are the three common types of IJGBs. Man, how many times did I say IJGB? Did you guys see the counter? And that's kind of a tongue twister. IJGB, IJGB, IJGB. How fast can you say that? <laughs> Anyway, so those are IJGBs. Now as a young American um, living in Nigeria, I tend to relate a lot to these types, regardless of what type they are within this very specific category, simply because they understand what it means to live in a Western society and we can relate on that level. And we're also of Nigeria. So it's like, oh cool, like y'all be getting, being in the West and be getting, being in Nigeria as a person of the West. So that's really cool. It's nice to link with those types of people because we can experience things together, do things together, the kinds of qualms I have about the society they share. So if you're from the abroad and you'd like to make acquaintances in Nigeria, it's definitely convenient to have at least a few friends that are also IJGB. Now you also have the pretend IJGB. Those ones will have gone to the embassy and they'll say, oh, I've been abroad. And then all of a sudden they'll go from talking like your typical Nigerian next door to talking Queens English or something. It's ridiculous. <laughs> or you'll have those people that maybe went to school in the abroad for two to four years. Then they come back all of a sudden saying, oh yeah, my name is Stephanie. <laughs> we know you did not stay there that long to be picking up that kind of a Valley girl accent. So guys, um, eating some coconut nut rice with some veggies and some fries. So I guess this has turned into a mukbang. Next, you have your hipsters. And the Nigerian hipster is sort of different from the American hipster. The Nigerian hipster loves John Bellion, wears Converse a lot, typically wears high waters, floral shirt, and really fresh glasses. They dominate the Las Giddy scene. Now guys that have been to this category can be really, really cool. 
so next. You have your grunge hipster. Now these ones overpopulate Abuja. They're typically really attractive, really grungy. They grow their hair out. They like be wearing tattered clothing even though their parents are stupid rich, you know, normal stuff like that. And those ones will probably be smoking a lot of weed, doing a lot of other designer drugs because their parents can afford to. The ironic thing is those ones have probably gone to some of the best boarding schools in the world though. They'll be there, be an extra. But it's fine, you know, it's not my business. At least they're just enjoying life, but you don't need them. If you're looking for something serious, it's not those ones that you need. Next, you have the nice guys. These ones are pretty dateable, you know, they're like, not too scary of course they'll love you and take care of you and value you they'll be there for you they'll hold your hand through everything they're great some women might not find them to be as adventurous as they'd like but they're really fantastic partners in relationships The last one on my list is the love of your life. Now, especially if you're someone like me, I didn't expect to find anyone that I'd be liking in this country, that's for sure. But I actually did end up dating and I actually did find, you know, some pretty cool people, even people that I could love. And I did love love but it's one of those things where you kind of have to be open to it and you have to recognize that if you get into something really intense while you're in this kind of environment either y'all will be in it for the long haul or you will go your separate ways it could end in heartbreak it could end in just like a mutual parting it's totally fine but you can definitely find someone that you're willing to spend the rest of your life with in this kind of environment even with all the types that I've listed, there's a lot of diversity. There are a lot of different traits that lend themselves to being actually quite dateable. Maybe not the Yahoo or Yahoo Plus or the sugar daddy that, you know, glucose guardians, but hey, at the same time, if that's your vibe, that's totally cool. Now, as for me, I'm looking for something serious, something long-term because I'm not looking for casual sex or casual relationships. So whoever I date has to be ready to at least consider marriage. I'm not pressed to marry but i'm not going to be dating aimlessly now if you want to have fun some of these types might be the type for you but loco i say this thing all the time i cannot shout if you know what's good for you do your research make sure that you're praying hard because some of these guys can just walk away with your life it's not like that all the time and there are definitely a lot of great people that will show you a great time and a safe time now I just wanted to give you guys really quickly a nice summary of some interesting types of guys. There are definitely a lot more and a lot of other types that are actually really, really great. So if you'd like to see a part two, let me know where we talk about the more positive archetypes of Nigerian guys, including some more unique ones. And if you'd like me to be more in depth about my dating life and my social life, let me know. I can let you guys know about some very interesting experiences I've had in this country. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole video. Can you guys guess which types I've actually dated? Let me know in the comments below. Please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below and let me know exactly what you'd like to see next. Be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones. And last but definitely never least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on all of the notifications so you know exactly when I post a new video. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys. God bless you all and I'll see you in the next video.